right, so welcome to the Grab the Map podcast, where we don't just look at it, we grab the map. I am so excited. I'm probably going to say the name wrong, but this is Mike Menino. Did I say it right, Mike? Perfect. 100%, man. Thank you. They are all perfect. I'm very excited to have a conversation with someone who's actually doing deals in the business. Um, looking forward to our chat today and uh, very, very, very excited. Hey, Mike, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for having me. All right, perfect, man. I am excited to talk to, man, what is it? A house flipper? Is it a wholesaler? Is it a multifamily, you know, mogul? How do you describe yourself these days? <laughs> um, good question. So, you know, I first started off uh, buying and fixing, you know, one house at a time, right? That's how it starts, like one house at a time. And I grew that business. Um, and now we've done over 80 houses, uh, since, um, I went full time in 2017 and, uh, since 2020, I've been now buying apartment buildings, uh, and like wholesaling apartment buildings. So it's a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, real estate is what I do. That's pretty amazing. You do real estate, right? I think that's like the answer that my daughter gives when I ask her what daddy does, she's like, I don't know. He's like today he, he does real estate. Like, is he flipping? Is he wholesaling? Is he, is he renting? You know, I like to do good deals. Right. And I like to create okay. opportunity for those around me and my team. So I'm, I'm sure you have a very similar thing. What got you into real estate? Like if you could go back and think about it, what, what got you into it? Very good question. So, um, the biggest thing was like mindset and freedom. So when I was 16 years old, you know, I was working at McDonald's in Michigan for $6 and 55 cents an hour. I'll never forget that. Like below minimum wage, which I found out because if you're under, if you're a minor, um, you can get paid like 20% less than the minimum wage. Cause I was like Googling this. Cause I look at my old tax returns. And I'm Googling like what minimum wage was. Cause my sister's like, it's seven twenty five. I'm like, I'm telling you, I got paid six fifty five, and I looked, and that's how it, that's what it was. But you know, I I was going to school thirty five hours a week, you know, in high school, and I was working twenty hours a week, like, um, you know, the maximum limit because I had to pay for my car, my phone, my insurance, my gas, and I had a girlfriend, so I had no money. I felt like, uh, so I quickly realized like the rat race at that age. You know, I'm working twenty hours a week. I'm I'm. I don't know, six, I'm making $120 a week and I have no money. And that's with living at home with mom and dad at the time. Right. So I could, and I'm working with older people and they're in their sixties and I'm like, okay, this is not the life I want to live. This is not sustainable. And I wasn't doing well in school. And I was like, I need to figure this out. So, um, I went from McDonald's for a year to busting tables for a year at 17, the waiting tables at 18. I saved up $14,500 by 19 years old. Um, and this is back in 2012. Um, and I'm from Michigan. So the recession hit really hard up in Michigan. And um, so I bought my first house uh, was $65,000. It was a three bed, two bath house as a foreclosure. I'll never forget it. The day I closed, I, uh, so I bought the property. And uh, I came to the house and there's like blood on the walls and it's gross. And I'm like cleaning the blood off the walls and the baseboard with the biggest smile on my face. Cause I'm like, oh my God, like this is my house. I'm just like excited about that. I'm like, I cannot believe it. I feel like I'm dreaming right now. And I was thankful to, to be able to buy that. So I got, you know, for your listeners, if you're just starting out, I got an FHA loan, which was a three and a half percent down loan. This is yeah. an amazing loan as you know, right? Yeah. Um, so deep. you get in cheap, you get in cheap. I, for, so I had $14,000 saved up. I bought a house for $7,000 at 19 years old. I was able to tie up this house. Um, back then the mortgage was 600 bucks a month. And what I did, I did house hacking before I knew what it was before podcasts. I, I listened to podcasts. And, um, so I rented out the other two bedrooms to people I waited tables with. Uh, so they would each pay $300 a month. So I'm like, sweet. So now I'm like 19, I'm waiting tables, going to community college and they're paying my mortgage for me. I'm like, now I got like a free place to live. You know, I'm building equity. I'm fixing up myself. Um, it took me six weeks to tile the bathroom. I'd fire myself as a contractor today if it took me six weeks to tile the bathroom, you know, but I'm like figuring it out. Right. And then, um, 
I did that. I lived there in 2015. I sold it for $147,000. So at 21 or 22 years old, I'm holding, you know, a $60,000 check, which is three years of waiting tables. And I'm like, this is amazing. I moved back home with mom and dad and I immediately bought another flip. Yeah. So like no stranger to hard work, right? I hear like hard work all in your bones, like, and then like, doing things before you even knew, like it was a thing, right? So house hacking, yeah. before you even knew the name of it. Um, tell me a little bit about your background, because I think this is something interesting to me. Like you obviously are a high performer. So where does that come from? Like, how did you grow up? Where did that come from? Good qu very good question. You ask a good question. So, um, so my father was a contractor. He was in construction. So he was the guy throwing up the cabinets, laying down the LVP floorings, putting up doors, right? And at a young age, I would see he would leave at 7 a.m., come back at 4.30 p.m., and just plop right on the couch. And I realized, I was like, he can't do this till 65 years old. There's no way he can physically do this laboring job till 65 years old. And one of the biggest blessings I've ever received uh, from God was at 13 years old, I was diagnosed with a disease called Crohn's disease, uh, which is kind of like an ulcer in your stomach where it like hurt to eat. And I was taking 16 different pills a day. Um, and through that, I realized that life is very fragile and we don't have a lot of time because usually at 13 years old, you can like break your leg and then go run a marathon the next day because you feel like Wolverine, right? And um, I realized that uh, life is very fragile. So I took that, you know, I was on steroids. Um, you know, I, at first I lost a lot of weight cause I didn't want to eat cause it hurt to eat. And then I was on steroids and all this medication. I'm going to the hospital once a month. And then I gained a ton of weight. I gained 35 pounds. I'm not a tall guy. So it didn't look good on me. I look like, you know, Pillsbury Doughboy or something, right? Literally I have a photo of it. I'm unrecognizable. So I took life very serious with, I would say those two, things I saw in life with how your health can be taken away in an instant and that um, you really don't have a lot of time. You can't physically labor for the rest of your life. So I would rather do this in my 20s and 30s and relax in my 40s and 50s. Um, and my biggest why uh, was actually my father too. Why I became really successful is uh, back in 2017. So when I started this, I made a deal with my, my father. I said, okay, if you make $100,000 a year with me, just in, you're only managing the contractors, you work 20 hours a week, you drive around from job site to job site in your car, and that's it. I'll do all the work. I'll find the deals. I'll find the financing. I'll do the paperwork. I'll, I'll do the underwriting. I'll do everything for these. I'll work 70 hours a week. Then you have to retire from your construction job. I'll work with me full time. Oh. And he says, and this was back, I'm like 24. I don't know what, this is back in 2017, so... 30 now. So I don't even know. Six years ago, I'm 24. I made this bet with my father and he's like, okay, whatever. Right. And then in 2019, we hit that goal and, um, he makes very well over a hundred grand a year, just drives around and works part-time. Right. So that was my biggest why though, was to help out. Cause I have like, I feel like the greatest parents in the world. So I wanted to give back to them. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, testimony. Did you say you're 30 now? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, so like to be able to retire your parents by the time you're 30. Um, yeah. And to to for them to have raised a child willing to do that or with the heart to do that, right? Um is is simply amazing. So thanks for thanks for sharing that. So that's one of the ways real estate has benefited your life, right? You be able to to kind of give back to those that raised you. What other ways? What are some other benefits you're seeing because I think right from the beginning, like I want to hook people into the conversation um, before we talk about some of the types of deals you do, like there's some of the benefits you're seeing in your life right now that you haven't talked about. It It's it's amazing, it really truly is. And I appreciate you asking that question because I love talking about giving and, and transforming lives. Like my life has been transformed, which is great. Like I don't have a real job, which is awesome, but it's cool to like Olivia, my office manager, I hired her two years ago. She was actually working for my friend for $35,000 a year. And she was an A player. I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I want you to work on my team. 
So she does all of our transaction management. She lists our houses, like all the paper for title companies, mortgages. The last two years, she's been making over $100,000 a year for the last two years. So now I get to bless her life, right? And then um, it's cool because now I'm building this like little community. I've got like her, I got like close friends where the great thing about real estate is you can benefit so many people, especially like our, our when we buy, fix and flip houses, we need the money to fix and flip the house. So we're taking on private money and like Olivia who works with me now invests in our deals because she has more money to, she couldn't have invested in our deals when she's making 35,000 a year. And like her parents and I got friends and families who are all investing in our company so we can buy, fix, flip houses. And they're, and like, this is a lot of people's retirement money where in the Chase Bank, they're getting 0.025%, you know, getting five bucks every quarter or it's getting, and it's getting eaten away by inflation. You know, we can bless them where we do all the work and we find and fix and flip deals and then they can get an amazing return um, on their money. So I, I just feel like the the most blessed man alive to be able to help my father, the people I work with, and friends and family. Also, that's that's blessing. Like blessed so that you can bless other people. Um, so let's let's get into it. Like, can you walk us through your decision making process? I understand that you have a flip company that flips single family mm -hmm. homes. You wholesale some commercial deals, right? And then you also uh, do some multifamily, right? So I, I think we can pick either one of those lanes and just talk us through your decision-making process when it comes to deals. Very good question. So I, I can start off with the fix and flip company. So my decision-making process for deals, it's very simple. I love basic math, right? It's right now we're buying houses at, you know, 70% of the after repaired value minus repairs. So for really basic terms, if a house is worth $100,000, when we go in, we put in new floors, doors, trim, cabinetry, paint, uh, when it's just like beautiful, it's only worth 100000 of most, you know, someone's willing to pay for it. We immediately take off 30% for profit margins and holding costs. So that means we're at 70000 Then we minus repairs on a house like that might be $30,000. So we're paying $40,000 for that house, right? Um, and in Michigan, our numbers look more where we're buying houses for a hundred and we're selling them for the twos, like 225, 250 range. Um, and so what we're looking for are the first time home buyer houses, because there's four different types of buyers who are looking for that house versus a luxury house, right? Cause a luxury house, you got one buyer, the guy who's going to live in it. And he, ha and he has a lot of options and he better like your, your, you know, what you picked for the house. I love about our houses, these thousand square foot houses, you know, one, two or three bed houses is all these buyers are first time home buyers. So they're coming from a 1980s apartment with the old cabinets. And then they come into our place. It looks brand new, like a brand new house. Like, oh my gosh, this for 250. Like, this is amazing. Um, so you have a lot more uh, diversity in the market, right? So you got first time home buyers. You got people who are downsizing. They sold their million dollar house. The, the kids left. And now they're going to downsize and move into a smaller home. You have people who are uh, buying as a, a turnkey investment. So they're going to just buy it the next day, list it on Zillow, and now they can throw a renter in there and they don't have to do anything. Those are usually like out-of-state buyers. And then four, um, I've actually even had some friends, they buy the house for their parents, right? So you have a lot of different buyers like chasing down this one house. And typically, like especially in Michigan, like when we're these 1200 square foot houses for 250, you can't even build these houses for that, that price anymore. So the replacement cost is higher than the, the price that we're selling these properties for. So those are the type of houses that we love to flip. Yeah. And I like that, you know, I, I think that you're targeting a market that is, is a bit, or I hate to say recession proof, that's dangerous, right? But a market where there's always going to be a need, right? We're always going to need those first time home buyer homes or those downsizer type homes, especially with the baby boomer generation. Like, as you think about the different buckets that you're in, multifamily, single family, fix and flip or wholesaling, like where would you say, what percentage of deals would you say are in which bucket? Good question. So most of my deals are in the fix and flip. So we do about 20 a year typically. I think this year we do around 15. Market's a little slower. 
But the great thing is like those deals are still selling today, even with interest rates at 8%, right? Uh, we just sold one last week, right? Or we should get an offer on another one. Um, and then I'd probably buy, my goal is two a year for these small multifamilies. We buy usually around the 20 unit range, like a 19, a 16 unit. That's kind of like, those are the last two that we bought. Um, and I love those ranges as well because the big ones were like, they're 100 unit plus. You're competing against everybody. You're competing against BlackRock. You're competing against like the biggest syndicators in the world who want that property. What I love about these smaller ones is we're looking for these owners who are baby boomers. They've owned this for 20, 30 years. This is, you know, have has been their nest egg. They haven't kept up with it. They haven't done all the renovations to push the market rents. Um, that we can come in, we can buy it. We can do creative things like get seller financing. So we're they're the bank and we just pay them. We don't have to get a bank loan. Um, and uh, so we do about 15 a year, 20 a year in the single family, two a year in the multifamily. And then I'll wholesale. It usually comes up out about one or two a year in the multifamily as well because we're constantly looking for these deals. But the area might not fit our criteria. Um, so then what we'll do is we'll wholesale it. And we've done you know some for multiple six-figure checks and wholesaling uh self-storage and apartment buildings yeah good deal good deal so i think um i want to like think put on my thinking hat as if i'm one of our listeners like people who listen to this all the time it's like thinking about your story it's amazing you're obviously a hustler you you figured out a lane right to to, to get in real estate like if I was somebody new and I wanted to to go in one of these areas, whether it was fix and flip, wholesaling, or you know rentals, um, or multifamily, right? How do you decide where to spend your time? And then I'll add to that: Why are you in all of those areas? Very good question. So starting off, especially if you don't have a lot of money, so if you find a deal, you can you can make money, like. So your time should be spent looking for deals because if you found a deal, you found money in the single family houses. You know, I've written checks of, you know, upwards to $60,000 for assignment fees. My buddy, Brandon Hicks, um, actually up in Boston, he did his first deal. His only property he ever put an offer on besides his personal residence was a self storage facility. He tied up for $775,000 with seller financing terms. And it was great self storage facility up in the Boston market last year. And then it needed a ton of renovations, like 300,000. And he was scared. He's like, Mike, I'm gonna walk away from the deal. I'm like, dude, you tied up an amazing deal with great seller financing terms. The interest rates lower than the bank. The down payment is lower than the bank. Um, I think you found a deal. Let me help you out. Within 30 days later, we found a buyer for $999,000. So he had an assignment fee on his first deal for $224,000. For finding a deal, he didn't have to understand all the intricates of the deal. He didn't have to understand the renovations. He didn't have to understand the, the, the whole path. But what he did is he went out, he cold called, he found a deal, got uh, the property under contract, what he thought was a deal, right? He wasn't even sure if it was. And he found an amazing first deal. And then uh, we were able to wholesale it. He cleared over a hundred grand on it and left his job. So my biggest recommendation is to whatever lane you pick, single family, multifamily, whatever it is, uh, it, to be a deal finder. Because if you can find deals, you can always monetize it. You can bring it to another investor. They'll, you can uh, joint venture where you can do the deal together and split the proceeds. You can just wholesale it. And that will get your feet wet and allow you to learn the whole process of this real estate game. Yeah, I, I love the like take action, get in where you can fit in, right? And start to build your capital. Um, and then I like how you said, okay, you're doing more fix and flips because that is allowing you to build capital, right? That is allowed to do that. And the wholesaling also allows you to do that. Um, something else I really like that you said um, is that if you find a deal, right? You can make money. So a lot of times people will come to me and they're talking about getting started. And I'm like, hey, hey, like, do you have a deal? Right? How many sellers have you talked to recently? How many sellers are you talking to? How many leads are you generating? 
because if you bring a deal, you're going to have opportunity. And it sounds like you, you agree with that, um, wholeheartedly. So if you don't mind, walk us through one of your real estate deals by the numbers, just so, Sure. and I, and you already kind of told us about your first deal, right? So that's the yeah. house you lived in it. Sounds mm -hmm. like you paid around 60,000, um, mm -hmm. something like that. Walk us through another one, uh, another deal. Yeah. The... Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, and, and I can walk, uh, you know, I, there's this one that's coming to mind because we're talking about deal finding right now. So this is what I love. So we just bought this house last week and it needs a lot of work. The after repaired value, this house is going to be worth $200,000 once it's fixed up, right? Once you do the floors, cabinets, everything. The house needs a lot of work. There's trees growing all over. There's raccoons living in the house. No joke. I mean, the neighbors uh, got the house condemned because there's raccoons living in the house more than there were people. And they were scared that the kids are going to get bit. So it's like this whole fiasco, right? No joke. That smells like money to me when I hear that, right? So when you hear money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's what we do. We're problem solvers. So this house, this, this seller uh, is older. He had his a rental for years and he paid like $60,000 for it, like 20, 30 years ago. Then he had it for rental and it, it was a hoarder house. We went through, I think five dumpsters to get this thousand square foot house cleared out. Right. Like no joke. And we had to have our animal trapper in there. Um, and the house is condemned. He can no longer rent it out. It's just becoming a burden to him because paying property taxes, the heat and electric got cut off by the city. So he's like, I just need to get rid of this thing. So we helped him out. We actually paid $35,000 for this house last week. And the repaired value is $200,000. So we paid 17.5% of ARV today in 2023 when everyone said there's no deals. Interest rates are really high. You can't make money in real estate, right? You hear that same thing over and over again. And we just did it last week. And the great thing is now, like I said, when you have that deal, you can do anything you want with it. Um, so we are inherently fix and flippers. We're coming up on a tough time uh, in the market. And for us seasonally, um, after November 15th to January 1st, no one's looking at houses up in Michigan. It's very, especially with the weather too, this house needs exterior work. So we can't even do that till April because it's going to be freezing until April. So we're like, gosh, we could do like all the interiors, but we can't even touch like this house. We can't even sell till probably May of next year because we're going to have to wait on doing the exterior work. So what we've done is call a couple fix and flipper friends in the area said, hey, do you want this house? Would you want it? And I have one who's interested at buying it for $90,000. And we paid $35,000. We cleaned it out. You know, maybe put seven grand in cleaning it out, right? And some other stuff. And um, and then hopefully make, you know, what's that? 40 grand or whatever it is before the end of the year. Um, instead of fixing it up, flipping it, making 60 grand, you know, six, you know, eight months from now, right? Um so that's a deal that came to mind because like I was saying, if you find the deal, you found money and you can monetize it any way you want. Absolutely. And you have the knowledge to to know, okay, this is when my slow season usually is. This is when it's going to be a little bit hard to dispose of this property, right? You on this one deal, sounds like you're you're actually potentially making more than your your secretary was making in her former job in a whole year. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the reasons I love this business. It's because you can you can really kind of 10x your earning potential and you're helping all these other people along the way, right? You're helping people uh, solve their problem and in turn um, benefiting your business as well. So I think that's a great one to walk through the by the numbers. I also know I've seen your social media presence. I've seen you online. Uh, it looks like you're everywhere, right? I'm, I'm seeing your exposure. Can you talk about like your strategy there and, and maybe let's just call it networking. What's your strategy when it comes to networking and how is that impacting your life and your business? Very good question. Very good question. So I tell everyone to document their journey and what they're doing and I've been, I've been getting better at it. Um, so I first started making a post once a week and just, so telling me, especially like, I, in the beginning, I struggled with having money, right? Because I didn't have money. I didn't have connections. So I was just, I sold my personal house, moved back home with my dad. I'm using my money. 
And then we start taking outside money. And that's how we started doing it was through Facebook and documenting what we were doing. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I do that is to let the world know, hey, I'm buying and fixing and flipping houses. I used to do it like HGTV. And now I have Olivia, my office manager, do it. But I have my phone and I'm like, hey, everyone, my name is Mike Menino. Now I'm looking at the screen. I'm like, we're going to, you know, rip out this kitchen. We're going to rip out the floor. We're going to paint the walls. We're going to make it look cool. You know, and then like four weeks later, I'm like, here's the middle. And then at the end, like, here's the end. Isn't that cool, right? And when you should do that over and over and over again, you'll get messages from friends and family like, hey, can I partner with you? I got $50,000. What can we do here? Right. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I did that was to generate uh, capital to our fix and flip business. Now we're blessed enough because in Michigan, we only need about one and a half million dollars because the price point we're at. We're fully funded. I don't, ha people say, like, can I give you more money? I'm like, we're fully funded because we only have about 10 houses at a time. We're doing for 150 grand a piece. There's a 1.5 million. That's all you need. It fills up pretty quick. Um, and, and you can also generate deals this way too. So by documenting your journey, I'll never forget this one. I'm doing it. I'm doing the same thing. Hey, my name's Mike Menino. And at the end, I say, um, if you or someone else you know has a house that you'd like to sell, uh, for a fair cash offer, give me a call, right? 248-783-8009. 248-783-8009. Me or my office manager will pick up, we'll walk you through the process, we'll come out to your house and give you a fair cash offer. And the cool thing is we can do a lot of things that most people can't do, right? We can buy the house, let you live there for a week or two while you figure out where you're going next. And then you can, because you need the money, right? So then you can go to your next place. You can also leave what you don't want behind and we'll dispose of it for you, right? All right, everyone, see you later, bye. And I and I, I make those over and over and over again. Um, and by doing that, we actually got a call from a, uh, or a Facebook message from a lady across the street. Her daughter said, hey, you're actually doing a house across the street, literally across the street from this one. I came across it on Facebook. My mom wants to sell her house, but she's a hoarder, doesn't want to list it on the open market, doesn't want a bunch of people walking through. Can you help her out? And uh, we did that house cross street, made $35,000 from that. And that was a free video with, you know, before then, I now I do a little bit of video editing. It's fancy now, uh, but that was no video editing back then. It was just like me, my iPhone, just walking around. Um, so my strategy for marketing is I use a lot of leverage, a lot of Facebook um, and like I said, to generate deals, to generate capital for my deals. Um, and, uh, now I also have, like, I help people buy, fix and flip houses to then also help more people, uh, buy, fix and flip houses as well. Yeah. So I love it. Helps you find money, helps you find deals. Um, I've also noticed that it helps me find like genuine relationships. So mm -hmm. then cool things that I think I've seen um, is I actually get to find genuine people that I want to hang around um, through 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 this kind of process. So I actually have another question that I think would be helpful um, as we're thinking about this. And if you're watching this on YouTube, um, just go to Apple or wherever you listen to podcast and subscribe to the podcast. I know that sometimes people are watching YouTube a lot lately, but hey, sometimes you might not want to pull up videos and you might just want to listen to this uh, in another format. So jump on over to uh, wherever you listen to podcasts and look up the Grab the, Mic Map, Grab the Map podcast. Think of a title for this one, Mike, but Mike Menino Flips Houses. Um, you've actually got a website where you actually help people like learn how to flip, right? Is that... 55kdeal.com? Yes. So uh, I made a free video for the listeners. Um, it's like a 20 something minute video how I find deals, how I uh, renovate them, uh, the whole process, and how we made $55,000 flipping a house. So I was like, hey, let's call the website 55kdeal.com. So it's 55kdeal.com. And you can go in there and uh, watch a free video. Um, and, uh, uh, below that video is like a link to my private Facebook group or my public Facebook group. And I'm in there and I post once a day. That's my commitment. And I answer any questions anyone has about real estate. And I just try to provide as much value as possible. All right. So 55kdeal.com. Totally, totally um, something you should check out. 
Uh, if you want to know how to accurately estimate rehab costs, totally, totally worth your time. Uh, Mike, I really appreciate you for sharing that as well. Um, I think I want to ask you like about your life outside of real estate because yeah, I was <laughs> fantastic. Um, what does a typical day for you look like? Like, what are you doing every day? That's a good question. I feel like I I live a very boring life. I'm usually here at my desk. I have a stand up desk and a treadmill um, that I pull out, you know, a few times a week, and I'm walking on my treadmill desk and I'm working. But you know, I'm very blessed. Like, um, I don't wake up with an alarm clock. And I'm very blessed to have that. That's one of my things about like being successful. Like someone asked me like, hey, what do you define as success? I'm like, having control of your time and waking up without an alarm clock, right? So, I mean, a typical day I wake up, I have, now I drink black decaf coffee because I'm 74 at heart. Um, it's crazy. I switched to decaf coffee like six months ago because of my buddy. And um, uh, I usually listen to music for probably 20, 30 minutes, drink coffee. And I kind of think about like, Hey, what am I going to do today? Right. Where are the things that the little rocks I'm going to uh, do today to uh, help me achieve my goals. Right. Like today I'm working on a survey. We're ordering a survey for this 16 unit we're refinancing right now. Now we need a survey. I'm like, great. You know, just to, like, just knocking out all those little tasks that we need to do every single day inside of our business. Um, but really it's just, I wake up, uh, enjoy my morning and I work. And the nice thing is, um, I'm able to take off anytime I want. So, you know, being physically active is very important to me. So my girlfriend and I will go to the gym for, you know, an hour at two o'clock in the afternoon, come back, you know, finish up maybe a little bit more work, but I'm very blessed, um, live out here in South Carolina now. And we have a pool and a boat and try to spend as much time outside when it's warm as possible. Living the dream, living <laughs> That's pretty you live once. Someone's got to live it, right? Look, you're living. Might as well be us. You're, you're taking action. Um, you're differentiating your income, making income all kinds of different ways. You're building relationships. You're helping people invest their money. You're helping people get their their old projects that they just want to get rid of. Get rid of. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, you're really just pretty cool guy man and i appreciate you jumping on here and telling us about what you have going on i think it's a tremendous benefit to all of us to learn your story and to learn what you're doing and not just that but to actually connect with you following um wherever they're wherever we're listening to this at right so how can i reach out to you or connect with you um outside of the 55k deal.com which we're gonna do um how can how can i reach out to you or connect with you on online very good question. So I'm big on Facebook. I would say that 55k deal website is probably the best because you can, once you go to the video, you can uh, click join my free Facebook group and I'm in there so you can connect with me on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook is also facebook.com slash Mike Manino with two I's at the end for like to be the second because I'm the second. So it's M-I-K-E-M-A-N-N-I-N-O-I-I -I, and it's a black and white photo. I have like 12,000 Facebook followers right now. And um, feel free to reach out to me on Messenger and uh, ask any questions you have. I'm just, I love, you know, being uh, a resource, especially for like new investors or, you know, um, if you have a deal to look at, you know, I'll, I'll look at a deal with you. So um, here to help. Perfect. Very good talking to you today, Mike. Very, very tremendous amount of value you provided today. I really appreciate your time because I know that you could be out there doing more deals. Uh, but you're willing to give back. And that's very, very valuable um, in our space. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Anything else you'd like to tell listeners before we, before we sign off? Good question. You know, and um, I will say one last thing, um, you know, this world, it, it can be lonely and scary at times. So my recommendation is connect with people who, are in this world and who are at the level you want to be at as much as possible. Like that Brandon deal I was talking about where he made a quarter million dollars, his first deal, right? He was scared. I wish I recorded the calls, right? He was so scared. He's like, Mike, the deal's going to fall through. The seller's not going to want to close. The buyer's not going to want to close. The deal's going to fall apart. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So you will be scared. There are scary, uh, you know, it's because you don't know what you don't know, right? But 
it's okay to be scared, but just don't act out of fear, if that makes sense, right? Like leverage a network, network with people who are at where you want to be because the guy who's 20 steps ahead of you, what you're worried about isn't scary to him, right? It's just scary to you because you've never done it before. Absolutely. Connecting with those that are where you want to be, like super, super cheap, cheap code there. Thank you very much for sharing that and everything else you've shared today, Mike. Hey, if you want to connect with Mike after today's call, don't forget, go to 55kdeal.com. Um, also, as you all know, you can always reach out to me at grabthemap.com. Love to talk to you anytime. Send me an email, grabthemap at gmail.com. I'd be glad to talk to you. Uh, we're always doing deals as well. So don't just look at it, folks. Grab the map. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.